Okay, we're gonna try this, okay? Do you need this for Mike? Um, no, let me make sure I got my volume all the way up on this. This will be my mic here, okay? Okay. Hi there, I'm Jen Ferguson. I'm so sorry for being late. We had a technical difficulty. It had to do with horizontal and vertical. Um, we have a great new piece of equipment and it doesn't allow itself to go vertical. So um, we're doing this all over again. Am I up? Okay, we're up. <laughs> so I'm so sorry, people. Um, this was just not something that was like, I guess, completely communicated. Um, so we're gonna have to learn how to do Mevo vertical because Mevo is awesome, okay? Uh, but enough about that, um, I'm Jen Ferguson, Michelle's over here answering your questions, and I sincerely apologize for all this. So we're gonna get started. We are working on a great frame project. And okay, so I'm the camera person today too, okay? Um, and we're going to hopefully get you a good shot of this so you can see what I'm doing. Um, we are starting with just raw wood and we are gonna be working with my product called Texture Medium. And this is by my Artsy Bill Embellishments. And Michelle's going, it's backwards probably. Um, <laughs> but this is a great uh, product to work with for doing a lot of different things. And it is basically what we call like marshmallow cream. It's fluffy, it's white, you can trowel it on, you can brush it on. Um, we even use like a little hotel room key and use this as a spatula and put it on. Um, so as I'm getting started and starting to play, if you guys will just tell us where you're tuning in from, say hi, welcome Michelle over there. She's too shy to get on the camera. Um, so I'm gonna get started here and show you guys what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this on this entire frame, okay? And I'm gonna show you the easiest process there possibly is because I know if I show you guys to use a trowel, you're probably going to get a little nervous and feel intimidated by it. So I'm going to just brush it on with a chip brush. You cannot get much easier than this, okay? Um, also, I wanna let you guys know if we miss a question or we don't get to it, um, during my project because I talk too much. Um, we're gonna do a Q&A afterwards, so um, we will definitely do that at the end of this project, and we'll make sure we get to all your questions, okay? Um, one thing about putting, and I'm gonna keep moving this around so you guys can see this, one thing about putting on the texture medium with a chip brush is you are going to get a strie finish, meaning there is going to be brush strokes in your product. And that's not a bad thing. I just like to always remind everybody that that is what you're going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all around this entire frame. And if I get anything on the outside edges or the inside edges, I'm just going to clean it up with my finger. Um, I do like to try to keep it thinner, I want to say somewhere normally between um, an eighth, an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, see how I'm just cleaning off the edge with my finger, so no big deal. I'm also putting it on with the way the frame was put together. So I'm going to try to keep my brush strokes going uh, all the way down that length and keep them shorter on the middle pieces. So just like it was constructed, I'm also going to keep my brush strokes like that. So, Michelle, what have I forgot to tell everybody so far? <laughs> um, well, most people are tuning in through Facebook. Um, oh, hey, that's cool. But on the Home Talk Live, there's the Shop Products button that takes you directly to all of the items that you're using today. Can you guys hear Michelle well? Because Michelle was just telling you that if you're interested in any of the um, products that I'm using today, there is a Shop Now button. Um, I believe on the Home Talk TV page, and you can um, just click that button and it'll take you to a special page just showing you everything that we're using today. Also, I know if you're on the Home Talk TV and you don't want to miss any more of these wonderful lives that they do, I think this is for also Facebook, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button, okay? And that way you never miss another live. You'll always be alerted when somebody's coming on here. And I promise you, when we come on here again later this month, we'll be on time and we will be vertical to start with, okay? 
Um, so I'm not worrying too much about my thickness, but I know I'm trying not to go too, too thick, okay? And I'm gonna go all the way around because I think it's so important to show you how we do the roller on here because it gets a little tricky that match, not say matching up the pattern, but I want you to see how I did the pattern on this, okay, and rolled it. So again, like I said, I'm working um, mm -hmm. with the way that the frame was created. And I thought of a couple different things. I actually thought of like mitering the corners and doing that, but when the texture's wet, it would be really hard. So I figured this was the easiest way to do it and get it all done at one time. Now, are there any questions, Michelle, so far that... Everyone is just saying hi, Jen, and where hi. they're from, and they're just <laughs> excited. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we're here in Huntington Beach, California. Um, the studio, I don't want to make anybody jealous, but the studio is like eight minutes from the beach, okay? So we're a wonderful <laughs> place to come and visit. And, okay, we've got some paper towels here so I can keep my fingers a little bit clean. Um, and now I'm going to introduce you to one of our rollers, okay? This is called um, the Lotus Pattern, is the design that I'm using. And this is what we call our Foey Rollers. Um, they were designed to make an impression in something. Uh, so I'm gonna bring you guys back up here for a second as I'm just chatting with you. So I wanna tell you about these, okay? Um, they're, I wanna say, a harder rubber. They're not like hard, hard, but there are hard rubber. They clean up wonderful, they'll last you forever. Um, we have done so much damage to them and used them so much, but we still can't wear them out, which is awesome. Uh, I think we've got 50, 60 different patterns. I don't even know anymore. Can Michelle shake her head? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you can buy this one with or without a handle. Okay, I just like to always show everybody. If by chance this um, roller is not rolling uh, freely, okay, take the bar out, out of it, spray this with um, like some cooking spray or put a little bit of Vaseline on it slide it back in because you always want to make sure that they're spinning really well because otherwise they can slide sometimes and you have to kind of play with your design okay so i'm going to put my camera back down and we're going to get busy on this okay now i got to remember which way i went first okay i know i went long ways but, okay that just tells you that you know i'm menopausal and i can't remember what i did yesterday sometimes okay i'm going to try to line up the middle of the design because that's my favorite part it's showing the lotus flower and I am just going to roll this right through the texture medium. And I'm kind of keeping my hand right where I'm rolling so that I can try to stay straight because the roller is way bigger than my surface. And I'm rolling slow. Uh, so don't feel like you gotta be Speedy Gonzales and get across there really fast. Now, my wood must have had a bow in it right here, meaning there's a low spot. So I'm gonna try, okay, we'll see how good I really am here. This is gonna be challenging. I'm gonna to try to look, line this back up a little bit and see if I can get the pattern. Okay, it kind of came together over there. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you guys know is this texture medium has what we call really good open time, working time. I have this whole frame um, with this product on it and I'm not worrying about trying to get through it fast before it dries okay and that's a great thing if you're working on say a drawer front or you're doing um, a piece of furniture um, or even if you're troweling this on your wall and you're you know needing to come back and roll through it um, the product's just going to stay wet long enough to do that which is totally awesome uh, if by chance you start to pick up quite a bit of product, okay, and this is not bad at all, but if you get to where it gets really gunked up, um, just have some newspaper or unprinted newsprint. We use packing paper around here a lot and just roll it onto there and it'll get rid of some of the excess um, product. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I came in here and I'm going to brush out where the roller went onto the side slat, okay. I'm going to get rid of that pattern because it's really going the wrong direction. And I'm gonna just brush that out nice and smooth. And so now I'm just gonna start this pattern on that edge and just try to match it up to the long slats. Let's see, okay, perfect. And no, it's not gonna be perfect, but in our world, okay, of uh, doing decorative painting and art and crafts and fun projects like this. Um, 
close enough is good enough, okay? And we really, really try to embrace all the imperfections um, and not get worried about those, so. So Lisa saying beautiful framework you're doing. Oh. She likes it. Thank you, Lisa. Um, this is just a lot of fun. There is so much you can do with these rollers up. It's just cool. Okay, so I'm gonna do my last side here so you can see how this whole thing came together and relatively quickly, okay? Um, just a note, okay, soap and water, or not even soap, okay, just water and a scrub brush and this thing will be clean for you, okay? So don't worry about uh, if you think issue. Okay, one big thing here, you gotta go let this dry. Okay, I wanna try to get this oh, close without a glare, okay? Um, you need to let this dry. Texture medium is probably gonna take about two, three hours maybe to dry all the way through, depending on how thick you got it on there. And then if you can see, how the edges peaked um, when it dries you want to sand those down okay so that they are not too rough I'm gonna give this to Michelle and maybe she can find a place to put it around here okay we're kind of packed <laughs> so Dale is asking um, I don't know what comment went okay never mind okay, okay never mind okay sometimes I think the comments go so fast she missed uh, she missed one of them okay um, but like I said, we're going to do a Q&A at the end, so we'll try to get to your questions at the end as well. So please stay with us to the end, so if there's something that we missed, we'll get to you. Uh, okay, now I've already come back and I've sanded this. I made sure that I sanded my outside edges if I got any product on the outside. And now we're going to go to some paint, and I'm going to be working with um, the DIY paint. You definitely can use whatever product your heart desires. Um, this just happens to be one that we love around here. And did I grab the right color? Okay, this is. This is sea glass. <laughs> um, and all you're going to do is paint it on. Now, the one thing that I do like about this paint is the fact that it pretty much gives me a nice opaque finish with one coat. And I wanted to show you this wet and dry because you can see there's a huge difference in the color, okay? So this is how it dries, and this is what the color looks like wet. Um, so you just wanna try to get on a nice coat. If you, by chance, don't get your paint on in one coat, you can definitely put on a second coat of paint, okay? And then once that dries, I'm gonna do some dry brushing on it with another color so I can bring out all the detail. Because once it's painted, We've almost lost the pattern, okay? And we want to bring the pattern back. So, Michelle, how are we doing time-wise? Um, we're about 20 minutes in. Oh, okay. Is that with our oops or all together? <laughs> I want to know. You can Is have an extra three minutes. <laughs> Was that the extra oops with our camera equipment or, okay. Um, Okay, so I'm trying to stay within my 30 minutes, and I still got a bunch of stuff to show you. Okay, but dry brushing is really important technique, and I think one that some, um, we talk about it a lot, but I don't know if everybody really knows how to do it. Um, so, you load the paint onto your brush. You're basically going to offload almost all of it, okay? And the brush I'm using is a stiff, bristled brush, okay? This is like the hair of what you see on a stencil brush, so it's stiff. And all I'm going to do is come back with a real light hand, okay? And my brush is so dry that all it's gonna do is pick up the detail of the roller pattern and bring it back. So isn't that cool how you can see that so well now? And you can add as much as you want so I can pick up some more paint, okay? And if I'm too heavy handed, you saw how that got be a lot darker there okay that's because I didn't dry it off enough but you can add as much dry brushing as you want what it'll do is pick up the pattern and it'll also pick up all the texture that we ended up with from applying the texture medium with the chip brush so all of that will come uh, you'll just you're highlighting all that detail okay so sometimes you don't want to dry brush if there's detail you don't want to highlight <laughs> so just an FYI there okay so add as much as you want, bring out the design, and then we are going to... They love that you're bringing the pattern back. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Sometimes you think, oh my gosh, did I lose everything? But um, it's so easy to bring it back. Um, so there it is, and it's still three-dimensional, 
Um, and there's so many ways to do that, but dry brushing is really cool. So I'm gonna grab one more frame. So we have this all nice and stepped out for you and show you um, the actual liquid metal effect that we're gonna do. Okay, this is so cool. Uh, so this is a product by Deco Foil, and you'll find this on the product list as well. And it's a liquid adhesive, and it can be used for a lot of things. It can be used for crafts. It can be used for um, even fabric, uh, and it creates a raised, nice line, okay? So you get this raised line that does not self-level, and always test it first, okay? Make sure that you're getting a nice line on there. I hope you guys can see that. So it's going to stay round. And all I did is come back to my pattern and just trace the design, okay? No big deal. I didn't have to be perfect by any means. And just came back and traced the entire pattern. So this was fun. And you can, I mean, you could trace an entire design. You can only highlight what part you want, um, but I trace the whole thing. Now, this product doesn't dry fast, okay? So be prepared that when you do this, you're gonna have about um, maybe two to three hours, okay? You can see it going on and it looks milky white and it will dry clear as you see next to me, but that takes a little while to get to that clear. Um, so this is um, a foil adhesive, okay? So it's not just any kind of liquid adhesive. This is meant for foils. So we are going to grab, oh, okay, I did forget one thing. Can I have a pair of scissors? Yes. No, they're right here. There's like five pairs here. <laughs> Michelle's <laughs> running somewhere. They're right here. Oh, oh. just hand them to <laughs> Just you. hand them to me so oh. I don't have to move. <laughs> um, we have plenty of scissors around here. Okay, so this is what we refer to as foil. It's metallic foil. And the side that you are seeing right now is the side that you're going to see when we transfer. And the back side is the actual the side that you put on to the adhesive. So I'm going to cut a strip that's long enough maybe to do this side. This is the exciting part. It is, it is. It's when it becomes alive. Okay. So make sure the shiny side is always facing up. Okay. I want to just make sure you guys understand that. Never put it the other way because you kind of basically have stuck plastic um, against a really, really strong adhesive. Okay. So the first thing that you can do is even just to take a soft cloth, okay, and rub it and determine if you got enough coverage or not. So it's immediately just pulling that off. Now, if you feel that you're missing some of the glue and you didn't get as much coverage as you want it, you can take a little scrubber brush. Okay, this has stiff plastic bristles and you can just rub a little harder. And that way, because remember, that is a raised um, line that I drew out. So you want to try to make sure that you're getting the foil on all sides. And you just keep scrubbing. And it is just the coolest stuff ever, ever, okay? This just looks like we poured liquid metal out. So that's how simple that is, okay? Look how gorgeous that came out. Okay, I'm going to grab, okay, remember though, see how it's white, okay, when we first do this and you're drawing it on, let it dry completely down to the clear, and the clear is going to be sticky, but it's just what we call a firm tack, and then that is really it, okay? <laughs> there is one back here somewhere, okay? So, this is the completed full frame that has been completely done, and you can leave it like this, or you can top coat it, okay? If you don't cover all of the foil or the adhesive, you probably still gonna have a little bit of a tack, so you can clear coat it, and that'll make sure that that is completely covered and you won't have to do anything else. So 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Now I also put foil on the inside edge, okay, just to give it a little extra. And I think I foiled the outside edge as well. Um, so that was just brushed on with a regular foil adhesive. So that is it, guys. I hope, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, I appreciate all of you hanging out with us um, through all of our little hiccups to begin with here. And um, now I think we're going to get started with some Q&A. So um, if we've missed uh, anything, any questions, I'm hoping that Michelle has found a couple, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, they basically were asking as you were doing it and then you move, you progress. So when you were doing the dry brushing, they were curious if it was just picking up the edge of the design. So it's going to not, dry brushing is not only going to pick up the edge of the design, but because we had that stray A um, from applying the texture medium with a chip brush, it's going to pick up all of that as well. So let me see if I can get a really good close up here. And maybe you can see the background, how it's picking up the strie. So it'll pick up all texture. It's not just going to highlight the design. So that's what I was saying. If there's an imperfection that you're not thrilled about, dry brushing is probably not great because it will highlight it, okay, and bring it out even more. Um, so if there are any questions, um, please feel free to ask. We'll hang around for a couple of minutes. Um, again, let's see, what else did I remember to do here? Okay, hopefully I remembered to tell you guys to um, click the button if you want to check out the products and supplies. Make sure to always hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of your lives here on Home Talk. And I think there's a su subscribe button also on Home Talk TV. Um, and uh, you can always come check out our page as well. And let's see, let's just move that out of my screen. Um, you can check out our page at Artistic Painting Studio. Um, and let's see. And they're asking, what else can you do with foils? Oh, you can do lots of things mm -hmm. with foils. Okay, so I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of, what do we have foiled here? Okay, so we have lots of things foiled here. This one's foiled with our wild animal print, or wild animal spots, I think, okay? So this has been foiled. And, Again, we just laid the entire pattern. So we have a lot of different patterns. We have colors. Um, let's see, did this, I've got a lot of visual aids here for you. Okay, <laughs> Michelle went and got a great project. Okay, so here's another one. This one's called Abigail is the name of the foil, but this is another picture frame that was done. And yes, this was one of my craziest projects of all. Yes, we um, definitely, foiled the cowboy boots. So there is really not too much that is safe around here without getting foiled. Um, oh, this one. This one was done the other day, okay? So this is foiled with almost like an abalone type of foil. It's um, very uh, holographic, so it reflects a lot of light and a lot of color. So Michelle, are there any other questions that we can answer? Um, keep just kind of doing a, a fun little, okay, here's another one, okay? Uh, this one's hodgepodge with a bunch of different foils. So this is what you can do with your scraps even, okay? And you can do denim, right? Yes, you definitely can do your fabrics. Um, so there are several different foil adhesives that are designed for fabrics. So you got to make sure you're using not only a, an adhesive for fabric, but an adhesive that are also foils that are designed for fabric. So it's a two-part scenario. Make sure you got both that'll work for it. And then um, there's questions about rollers. Like they like the artsy leaf that was behind me that they saw. Oh, okay. So um, yes, we, um, like I said, I think there's like 60 patterns. Um, so right behind me, um, you can see the patinaed one. That one's called artsy leaf. The other one is our cobblestone pattern. Um, and uh, I just hit that link to all the supplies. I think once you hit the roller link, you probably can find all the others. Okay, there's a ton of them on there. We'll throw some links on here as well for you. That'll take you directly to um, the roller collection. Leslie says, you need a picture of your boyfriend's car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, I foiled the console of my boyfriend's car. Okay, that one was another crazy project. Okay, so maybe the boots and the console um, will probably kind of go hand in hand. They were both kind of fun. No other questions? No. Okay. 
Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Again, we're sorry about the snafu in the beginning. We promise we'll always be vertical. We'll never go horizontal again on you. And um, I want to thank Michelle for hanging out with me and all of you for being present. So we'll see you again at the end of the month. I will be back here with another fun project. So thank you guys. We appreciate you being here. Bye. What did we run time-wise? It's 4.34, so even with your question and answers, it was basically, it was still under 30 minutes.